Okay, so the recording is uh, started. Uh, welcome once again, everyone. Uh, thank you for being a part of this class. Uh, we will study um, five books in this course. We will pray. Uh, I'll give you a, uh, an overview of uh, how we are going to go about this, uh, and then we will get started. Okay, so I want to request uh, one of us to please lead uh, with a word of prayer, please. Okay, how about Prince? Prince, uh, would you like to begin? Sure. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you. And this morning, Lord, you've given us one more day in our life, Lord. Thank you. We submitted this time in your hand, Lord. Help us to learn your word. Whatever we'll learn, we use in our in life, Lord, help us. Holy Spirit, lead us, uh, lead us, guide us. And also, I pray for the ma'am and all the students, those who till the chat. I pray for them. They will join quickly, Lord. Thank you. I submit all the classes in your hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Prince. Uh, and uh, once again, uh, really good to see all of you. Uh, this class, you know, each each one of you, uh, I am so grateful for you for for your uh, what can I say? Like you have been committed and you've been journeying together through all these semesters. Okay, so uh, truly uh, that that is wonderful. Grateful to God for you for your commitment, and I pray that this final semester, uh, which uh, many of you. Uh, especially the online students have taken up that God would give you the grace, the strength and the wisdom to, to uh, complete it. But it's not just about completing, isn't it? This, uh, whatever we study, God's word is for life and uh, uh, beyond life here on earth. So it's uh, truly precious. Uh, and may every word, you know, become a, a part of you. So in this course, we are going to study five books of the Bible. We will touch on the book of Hebrews. Then we will also study first and second Peter. We will study the book of James. Uh, and then finally, the book of Jude. Okay, so quite a few uh, uh, books to complete here. So I might go uh, a little faster than uh, the way I did your previous course. Um, However, you know, we will definitely uh, make sure that we touch on all the key, uh, key truths from these books, all right? Uh, and there will be three assignments. Uh, we will split it as uh, uh, 30, 30, and 40 percent as far as the percentage of uh, marks is concerned. Uh, so I encourage all of us to attempt all three assessments okay so uh, i mean uh, you know that when you attempt you at least end up gaining you know some portion of the marks it's when you don't take up an assignment that you actually lose more marks so make sure that you attempt all the three graded assessments in this course all right so the uh, assessments are planned for mid february uh, mid march and mid-April. Uh, this will be the same for the e-learning students as well. Okay, the timing and the, the, uh, the, the proportion of the marks that have been allocated to the three graded assignments. And uh, apart from this, uh, uh, for our study, we have uh, the primary primary resource as uh, David Guzik's uh, Enduring Word, which we've been following for uh, all our uh, courses at APCBC. Uh, so uh, you could, you know, refer to that and over and above, you know, you can, you're free to touch on any other commentary, learn from any other commentary as well. But primarily, you know, we are using uh, the commentary of David Kuzik. Okay, so there is no textbook as such, which has been posted on your stream page or uh, for the e-learning students, the textbook page. You just have to go to the commentary uh, and then 
um, study from there. Okay, so that is how we are going to go about it. So the first book that I have chosen to begin with is from is the book of Hebrews. So let's start off with the book of Hebrews. So um, the book of Hebrews is very, very uh, rich. Every word there, you know, we could spend hours, and I'm not uh, exaggerating, you know, really, you could spend hours trying to understand the meaning of uh, each word given here. But we will attempt to be quick so that we can get the, the key learning from it and then move on so that we can complete all the five books of the Bible in this particular course. So Hebrews has 13 chapters. When you look at the entire book of Hebrews, um, primarily the person of Jesus stands out in this book. So we will uh, see that the Lord Jesus is fully God that he is fully man and not just that you know the book of hebrews keeps talking about the superiority of the lord jesus how he is greater than the greatest prophets uh, of old you know, moses is considered as the greatest uh, prophet but even greater than Moses is the Lord Jesus. So the superiority of Jesus is talked about in this book for us. And then we are uh, uh, shown how the Lord Jesus is the fulfillment of the promises that God made in the old covenant. We will see that he is like the high priest, you know, Melchizedek, uh, in fact, he he we we will see. Okay, we will see in Hebrews chapter seven uh, how, sorry, Hebrews chapter six how you know he uh, is the greatest high priest. Okay, and then the continuation uh, happens in Hebrews chapter seven, the superiority of Jesus to Melchizedek even. Okay, so we we will see that, and then you know we we will continue to see that uh, the Lord Jesus has become the mediator of the new and the better covenant, uh, and He also you know has become that sacrifice, that great sacrifice uh, for us who has taken away our sins. So you know, the Hebrews paints this wonderful picture about the Lord Jesus as the high priest and also our sin bearer. And then later on, you know, we move on to uh, looking at uh, Jesus as uh, uh, the one who suffered for us, and, you know, who uh, who trusted in the reward of God and overcame challenges in this life. And we, we uh, begin to see the value of faith. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 11, uh, a very, very... Um, uh, famous, you could say, chapter in the in this book talks about faith and how through faith, you know, we can overcome. And the Lord Jesus was one who overcame uh, uh, here in the in the sufferings that he experienced. So, you know, the the book of Hebrews has all these themes flowing through it, uh, and it's really rich, really rich, uh, calling us to fix our eyes on the Lord. Jesus Christ. Okay, so primarily, uh, these are some uh, truths or concepts, if you, if you want to call, you know, uh, here in the book of Hebrews. Now, the book of Hebrews, you know, we will look at uh, a little bit of background before we look at the chapter and what, uh, chapter one and what it contains. So, uh, the author of the book of Hebrews, there is a uh, some speculation about it because the author does not introduce himself or herself by name. So uh, the historians have many opinions about who could have written the book of Hebrews. Several people uh, and uh, certain, uh, you know, uh, certain prominent historians believe that the writer of the book of Hebrews is Paul himself. He wrote it in uh, Hebrew and then later Luke translated into Greek. That's what they believe. Uh, but uh, Paul, if you look at his other writings, he has been very um, 
out there to introduce himself but in the book of hebrews you don't find anyone's name so uh, it's it's hard to confirm that this is really paul and also the writing style uh, is slightly different in in the book of hebrews compared to other books because you know paul has a very systematic way of writing um uh, here you would see that it kind of begins um in a very philosophical way uh, and then you know it kind of ends up like a letter towards the end so uh, it's different from the other formats that paul has followed in the epistles however there are a good number of historians that believe that this book was probably written by paul himself uh, and then you know there are others who say that uh, this book was probably written by uh, some other prominent uh, people in the first century church uh, maybe barnabas maybe barnabas was the writer of this book or apollos if you recall the book of uh, um, uh, corinthians we have an introduction to this person called uh, apollos who was a co-worker of paul and he was an eloquent man um, so there is speculation that he could have been the writer of the book of hebrews then again there are people who say that it could have been priscilla no again from the book of hebrews if you uh, for acts if you recall uh, there was aquila and priscilla priscilla was a uh, uh, very well versed in god's word uh, and she uh, is also sometimes looked at the greater teacher among the uh, you know the the couple uh, uh, the husband and wife uh, team so it could have been priscilla is what some people say now uh it's it's really hard to um uh, confirm all all these uh confirm the authorship so a lot of people would simply say uh the writer of the hebrews you know whenever they talk about the book of hebrews they wouldn't say that you know paul says they they won't use the name of any author uh to be on the safe side they would generally say the writer of the book of hebrews so you know you can subscribe to uh, uh i mean if you think this was paul then yeah you could probably say paul but then uh, generally people stick to the author or the writer of the book of hebrews another thing about the book of hebrews is that <laughs> excuse me it was likely to have been written uh, to the first century church so uh, you dated back to about 67 or 69 67 to 69 ad and uh, that was the time where there was a lot of persecution uh, going on uh, and you would see that as part of the writing there's a lot of encouragement coming to uh, believers who were struggling you know what were the struggles of those believers um they were not respected probably in the community a lot of privileges that other um, uh, jewish people had you know they were uh, taken away or you know certain benefits were not provided to these people and uh, uh, further if you study the times that these believers lived in people were being killed for their faith people were uh, being uh, very seriously persecuted so Uh, it was a tough time so the writer of the hebrews brings encouragement and one of the ways in which he brings encouragement is for uh, to call the people to draw their attention to what is important what is important you know in hebrews 12 later on you would find that the writer says fix your eyes on jesus there's so much going on around you uh, how can we overcome we can overcome when our focus is right and so the theme the main theme the one thing if you if you want to talk about one thing that comes out strongly in the book of hebrews it's the person of the lord jesus the writer is always saying you know jesus is this this is the revelation about the lord jesus uh, fix your eyes on jesus so as long as we fix our eyes on the lord jesus the storms of this life the challenges of this life 
right we are able to overcome and that is the manner in which the writer has has encouraged the believers who were going through a rough patch and a very very difficult uh, uh, you know uh, time uh, this was also considered as a very difficult time for the early uh, church uh, you know under the persecution uh, of the then uh, government that they were going through so you know it is a book of encouragement it is a book which is calling the believer to rise up and fulfill the purpose that god has for the believer okay so now let's uh, get into uh, the book uh, i would prefer at least for the first time uh, to read through the entire book uh, entire chapter the first chapter but later on i don't think we will have the time to read through every chapter okay so you will have to follow uh, the the chapter have it open have your bible open we are using the nkjv version primarily for this course so have it open and then uh, you know i i think i will uh, just go with the explanation as uh, all of us look at the chapter in front of us okay? we will not have time to read every chapter but chapter 1 let's quickly read through it so i would like to request uh, maybe a couple of us to read this chapter um uh, okay so we have uh, we have 14 uh, verses here so how about we yeah we could do like uh, to begin with you know people could do like four four verses uh, right so uh, and then whatever is remaining towards the end the last person could just uh, read those verses so uh, it, it might take four of us to read so can can uh, any four people please volunteer in the past god spoke to our ancestors many times and and in many ways through the prophet but in these days he has spoken to us through his son he is the one through whom god created the universe universe the one whom god has chosen to possess all things at the end he reflects the brightness of god's glory and and is the exact likeness of god's own being sustaining the universe with his power words of the achieving forgiveness for the sins of mankind he sat down in heaven at the right hand side of god the super, super, supreme power the son was made greatness a uh, greater than the angel just as the name that god gave him is greater than their theirs for god never said to any of his angel Okay thank you uh, yeah. Aren the next person could read from verse 5 For to which of the angels did he ever say you are my son today i have begotten you and again i will be to with him a uh, father and he shall be me a son but when he again be brings the first born into the world he says let all the angels of god worship him and all the angels he says who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire but to the son he says your throne o god is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom yeah thank you kiran i think the next person can read yeah you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness therefore god your god has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions and your lord in the beginning laid the foundation of earth and the heavens are the work of your hands they will perish but you remain and they will all grow old like a garment like a cloak you will fold them up and they will be changed but you are the same and your years will not fail but to which of the angels has he ever said sit at my right hand till i make your enemies your footstool 
are they not all the ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit the salvation? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Thomas. I think three of you have completed uh, reading through the entire passage. That's good. Now let's uh, go ahead and uh, study what is coming out of uh, these passages. So um, when you look at it overall, the first chapter of the book of Hebrews, uh, you will see that the deity of Christ is what is being talked about here. Deity means uh, the fact that the Lord Jesus is fully God. Okay, He's, He is definitely God. That is being brought out beautifully in the first chapter of the book of Hebrews. And it's been said in different ways. Uh, firstly, we would see the, um, the, the characteristics okay, of the Lord Jesus and how that reveals to us that he is God. And later on, you know, uh, the, writer, the writer begins to um, compare the angels and Jesus and he establishes that the Lord Jesus is greater than the angels. And then he describes how the angels are the ones who worship the Lord Jesus. This could also be because during the times that uh, the, the during the times when this book was written, the believers uh, probably were touched by some sort of a teaching that said that angels are also uh, gods and that they should be worshipped. So he is demolishing that philosophy uh, in this first chapter. So mainly it tells us that Jesus is God, that Jesus is superior in every way and that, you know, uh, the angels are actually subject to the Lord Jesus. And also there is a very beautiful picture of the Trinity that is coming through. You would have studied uh, in Christology and other courses that the, the very word Trinity, you don't really find it in the Bible, but in the way the uh, description of the three persons of the Trinity comes through and the way you know, here you, we would see certain quotes from the Old Testament where the father is addressing the son. And, you know, this is where this is how we uh, paint the picture of the relationship that the three persons of the Godhead have. So the Trinity is also something that we will understand you know, in the interactions of the persons of the Godhead from the book of Hebrews. And then uh, one more beautiful thing about the book of Hebrews is that there will be uh, quotations from the Old Testament. Now, I told us that the book was written to the believers who were suffering during the uh, first century. Now, these believers uh, were of the uh, Jewish origin, okay? Uh, and thereby, to convince them, definitely the writer had to take from the Old Testament, from the, the books that were already available to these Jewish believers because they were familiar with the scriptures. And so he takes many scriptures to explain the person of the Lord Jesus. And that's how, you know, in, in a very rich way with a lot of substantia substantiation, he proves that the Lord Jesus is the fulfillment of what God has been speaking to us in the Old Testament. So, you know, that is kind of a summary of the, the first chapter of the book of Hebrews. So now let's get started. The first verse itself, it's really beautiful. He begins by saying, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. So the writer is speaking to these Jewish believers and it's somewhat like the, the Bible. And in the Bible, we know the, the canon of scripture. Somehow the way they have arranged it is uh, 
it begins with genesis though chronologically that may not be the first book which was written yet in the bible you have the book of genesis uh, which is the first book and in that book you know we have the first uh, verse there which says in the beginning god and uh, it's like establishing the greatness of god the writer does not even uh, find it necessary to try to explain how god came into existence he simply emphatically states that god always existed that god is superior to anyone uh, anything that he is the creator and the writer is unapologetic he doesn't feel that he owes an explanation to who is this god how did this god you know uh, create us how did he come into existence nothing no explanation he just takes it for granted you need to know there is a god who he is okay very unapologetic so the first word of the book of hebrews is god okay uh, and the greatness of god no explanation offered god who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past and he introduces this god as a speaking god a god who seeks relationship with mankind a god who chooses to interact and you see the various times various ways this god has made an attempt to communicate because what is important for this god relationship why was man created for relationship and this god has communicated you know as part of a relationship we know the people that we relate to we keep getting to know their nature if we understand them over time and similarly you know they understand us and we see here that god is also striving for that he wants us to have a revelation of who he is and that is why you see here god in various ways in you know uh, various times spoke so he is giving us a revelation of who he is he wants us to understand him and that is what worship is isn't it for us to know him and whenever we know him what happens we can't but worship so worship becomes a response to the revelation of god and when god speaks worship you know becomes the result of the life of a believer so even through the book of hebrews when we study it moment by moment you might find yourself saying wow is this who god is wow it's amazing you know and adoration comes out of our hearts and we say oh god thank you for who you are and thank you for your goodness thank you for your greatness so worship is a result of the revelation of god and we see here the writer of the hebrews says god wanted to reveal himself and so he communicated he spoke how did he speak in times past to the fathers remember it's written to a jewish audience and we have people in the old testament who were considered as the patriarchs you know by the jews you had the abraham and the jacob and the isaac and the moses and all of them were known as the fathers to them god spoke and how did god primarily speak in the old uh, uh, covenant we know that the prophets were the mouthpiece of god but we know now in the new testament by the holy spirit how the prophetic works through every believer but in the old testament primarily through the prophets so god's word came through the prophets but the writer reveals a uh, the greatest way in which god has spoken to us and he simply seals it as in these last days he has spoken to us by his son so looking at the person of the lord jesus you no 
know, one conclusion that we can jump to is that he is God's message. Okay, what is God's greatest message? What is God's most precious letter that he ever wrote to us? You can pull it out of the drawer. All the communications from God and then you will pick up this one letter called Jesus. The greatest message that God ever gave us. And that's what the writer says. He has spoken to us. What is the last days? You know, last days refers to uh, the time period after the ascension. Uh, in fact, you know, the first century uh, church was waiting during these last days for the second coming of the Lord Jesus. And we continue to do that. We're still in the, the, the last days uh, in fact, the last of the last days. And how uh, has the Lord spoken to us in these last days? Through his son, Jesus Christ. So we conclude that the Lord Jesus is the greatest message that God has ever given to mankind. So if you look at you know, uh, the, uh, the ways in which the message came earlier on, many ways isn't it a uh, burning bush you had moses receiving a message through the burning bush you had elijah receiving the message of god in different ways also a still small voice but the message came in that form the message came to isaiah through a heavenly vision the message came to hosea through a crisis that he was going through in his personal life through uh, to Amos through a prophetic word and a picture like a basket of fruit but which is the greatest message in these last days through his son Jesus Christ so God has spoken to us so when we look at the person of the Lord Jesus there is a message from God and our hearts must keep capturing what God is saying through the Lord Jesus how would we understand this message it's good to study about the person of the lord jesus from scripture you know all of scripture the central personality of scripture is who yes the godhead but the lord jesus okay uh, is being spoken of throughout scripture whenever we read the bible i've heard preachers say that you can read it over and over and over again because once you have read through the context the history the geography you know, all of those things we should really be looking for jesus in every book of the bible every verse of the bible you know, every uh, word of the bible because ultimately the entire bible is pointing to the person of the lord jesus so when we study and especially through the Gospels, who is this Jesus? What did he do? How did he reveal the Father? You know, you, you get the message that the Father was trying to convey to us. So the greatest message is the person of the Lord Jesus. That's what the book of Hebrews is telling us. Now, what, uh, the second portion here of verse 2, it says, Whom he has appointed heir of all things. Again, you see the, the description of Jesus is coming through. What is another uh, truth about Jesus here? He is appointed. Okay, meaning God's power has called him, established him, appointed him. So he is backed up by the Father. He is appointed. Do you understand that? And then you know, we, we see here that he is the heir of all things. Heir meaning somebody who has been uh, given uh, all the inheritance. That person is the heir. Usually the son or the daughter, the, the children, they become the heir of the father. So who is the heir of everything that God has, the Lord Jesus. So when we look at the Lord Jesus, we understand, hey, everything is his. He is the heir of the Father. All things. It says all things. Heir of all things. So that is the Lord Jesus. 
for us he is appointed he is the heir through whom also he made the worlds okay so see here we usually refer to the father as the creator but what are we picking up here the lord jesus had a role to play in creation so the worlds were also made through the lord jesus who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person so the brightness of god's glory refer simply refers to uh, the the best you know the like shining shining the truth of who god really is so jesus has become that best expression of the father he is the brightness of his glory we can we can uh, pick many things to describe the glory of god but what is the brightest expression of god's glory the lord jesus if you want to understand what is glory you know glory refers to the purse the greatness of the person of god so the greatness of the person of god is revealed through the person of the lord jesus christ and jesus is the one who shines out who god is so he represents god really well and that is our understanding from what is being said so if we want to know how great is god you know how wonderful uh, uh, is god how how marvelous you know are his works how can we find out look at jesus and jesus is shining the glory of god for us right so he is the brightness of the glory of god and we're also told that the lord jesus is the express image of his person again he is the best representation of the father so for us to understand what is what is this express image of his person express image is like uh, you know the exact uh, replica or it is like when when you stamp on um, envelopes generally people use a stamp and that stamp is the you know the the image that comes on the the envelope is the exact image which is on the stamp isn't it so uh, in the same way when we look at the lord when we consider the father who is the exact express image of the father the lord jesus so we study the life of jesus we study the life of jesus where we see oh jesus was holy so it shows us that the father is holy jesus uh, is is compassionate he healed people he delivered people he did you know mighty miracles in people's lives so what is the father like he is a compassionate god you know so you study the life of jesus in every in every characteristic of the lord jesus jesus uh, was zealous for uh, the house of god so the father you know he is zealous uh, uh, about the kingdom you look at the life of jesus right he was uh, one for justice and so we can say oh the father he is a god of justice so when we want to know the father again we have to study the person of the lord jesus because here the writer of the hebrews is saying look jesus is the express image or the exact image of the person of the father okay and another thing about the person of the lord jesus is upholding all things by the word of his power now we have also studied in the book of john that the lord jesus is the word okay he is the word himself logos here the writer of the hebrews you know uh, uh, understanding that he says that the there is a power in the word of the lord jesus if you remember many times you find that through he himself is the word but also through the spoken word you know uh, the lord jesus calmed the storm the lord jesus healed the sick the lord jesus cast out demons 
one word that he spoke carried that power but here the writer of the hebrew says you know the word of jesus he says word of his power that word is the word of god's power and what function does the word of jesus perform he says upholding all things so the word of the lord jesus is so powerful uh, if you look at the way it is written you know in in uh, the uh, greek here you would understand that this is referring to the maintenance of the universe you know how is the world if you will sustained in its form and the functions of the world continue by the word of god you know everything is set in place things are happening you know the sun is rising every day the you know different things that are set you know as as uh, uh, the laws in the world it's all it's all going on it's moving on because of the word of god so the word of god is what is holding the world up and sustaining or if you want to term it as maintaining the world that's the understanding that you get from uh, this particular portion of the verse that god this whole world is maintained by the word of his power so for a believer when you when we realize oh wow the word of god is maintaining the universe can it not sustain my life okay an individual life of course it can and god's word is so powerful that whatever you and i are going through he can uh, work in that through the word of his power and then you know we continue to see that he had by himself purged our sins so you see here different aspects of christ our savior uh, are being spoken of now the lord jesus is being introduced as the one who bore our sins he purged our sins or in other words he removed our sins okay so he has become our eternal savior uh, and the writer of the hebrews wants the believers to see all this about the person of the lord jesus so he purged he removed our sins and then he goes on to say he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high so he describes the position where the lord jesus is seated right now uh, in his heavenly uh, ministry and he says he sat down okay and we have studied about this earlier sitting down is to say that one has completed their task so the earthly ministry that the lord jesus had we know that he represented the father well uh, in all that he did he did the works of the father he also died on the cross to complete our redeeming work for us and after completing his earthly ministry he sat down okay so sitting down is to say that there is a completion of the work so jesus has completed the responsibility which was given to him in his earthly ministry and where did he sit you know uh, where we sit says a lot about us not every one of us can go and sit in the parliament can we because there are people in the parliament who have um, who have fought the political battle who have uh, you know who have established themselves as leaders they have voted been voted in by uh, many many people they have been selected appointed to have their seats in the parliament so when we say that somebody sits in the parliament there is an honor attached to it okay so they have at least in our country in the democratic process they have earned that position okay by virtue of uh, uh, their works by virtue of their performance and so you know we will see how the lord jesus uh, uh, has gained this position but 
it is important for us to note that he has a position a very very special position a great position in fact that you find him sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high you know everyone doesn't get that seat at the right hand of god and that in itself reveals to us that he is deity you know, even the angels cannot sit uh, in the presence of god uh, they cannot sit at the right hand of god some people consider that the angels are truly great but no they don't have that position nobody has that position it's only the lord jesus because he himself is also majesty he is the very son of god he is god okay so before going to verse 4 i just want to pause here and check with all of you how you are doing are you comfortable are you getting something out of this uh, are you able to understand what we are talking about okay so let me just pause for a moment and also if there are uh, any comments any questions from you okay so there are no questions but uh, i hope you got what i was saying i i thought i'm i'm really going through these verses fast and i realized we've run out of time on our first session okay so this this is the fastest i've ever taught hebrews um but it's not easy to uh you know just go over the words so quickly because there is such great depth and there is revelation about the person of the lord jesus that it it's almost uh you know is so wrong to miss it uh and and you know we we can just sit for hours on every every word and uh, it, it's like drinking from the nectar like a bee drinking from the nectar of, of the flower right slowly just take in the goodness uh, of of what is being spoken to us about the person of the lord jesus his greatness his superiority and the writer establishing that he is indeed deity okay so that is the book of hebrews for us and that is how it starts out here in the first chapter and i, I really um, pray that more than um, reading and going over this for our course sake that for our life we will uh, study the book of hebrews and that we will keep coming back to each word in this book time and again for us to have a deeper understanding of who jesus is and that bringing a response of worship to who our god is so let let's do this because of uh, the uh, limited time we will stop for the session first session uh, let's uh, take a 10 minute break we'll come back and continue from verse 4 uh, you don't have to log off the call just uh, remain muted uh, and uh, after 10 minutes you know you can uh, come back here and i will start the second session for us okay so all right class let's take a 10 minute break and we'll be back at 10 am thank you